bigaddress.net, the hard news blog there, also the Media 7 show on TVNZ7. Russell, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, and uh, you had a great weekend at the Splore? Indeed, yes. Uh, lovely to see you there. Yeah, uh, likewise. To catch up at um, all kinds of um, hours of the day and, and various um, places around the site as yeah, well. Yeah, I like how we get running into each other at different times of the day. And in various states of dress or undress, whether it be in the water or out of it. Indeed, yes. No, <laughs> no, and uh, how marvellous it was having that beach there. Yeah. Um, I, I've written a, a fairly lengthy blog post about the whole thing, but... Um, I, I think having um, the ability to go and have a refreshing swim was one reason I got through that weekend, really. Yeah, yeah uh, indeed. It was the nature's um, bath. Yeah, really. exactly. <laughs> and I, I just could not believe how good I felt on the Sunday morning after two fairly big nights, yeah. as you said. Yeah. Um, and it was uh, honestly one of the most amusing things I saw all weekend was uh, down at the uh, far end of the site at the river, which was cold. Mm. And uh, I managed to get myself in there and uh, was thoroughly woken up on the Sunday morning, and then I just sat and watched everyone else do the same thing. <laughs> what, what do you? How do you? Th- what do you think? If she makes a festival like that work? Um, I think um, the crowd actually, mm. uh, lovely sight, um, despite a few glitches. Generally, pretty well organised, but um, it was the attitude of the people. And I, I've actually been thinking a bit about that uh, over the last couple of days. And the, the psychology in having uh, the first, you know, almost the first person you see at the gate uh, be someone in costume. Yeah. I think actually yeah. it's, it, it does alter, it alters the mindset. Mm. Uh, because, I mean, there were a lot of pretty out of it people there, uh, particularly late on both nights, yeah. and yet I never felt unsafe. Mm. And while there were a lot of people high, I didn't see very many people at all who you would say were wasted. No. Does it say that, you know, that, 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 that the person in a, in a costume, you know, welcoming you at the gate, does it say leave whatever baggage you're bringing from your city life or wherever you come from behind and, for, for two days and, and let yourself go experience something different? Yeah, yeah. I think that's the first thing that says that to you, yeah. Mm. Um, and... Um, I, I actually also really like the, the way that the crowd cut across demographics. Um, you know, this, this wasn't you know, okay. There's a lot of twenty somethings there, but there were sixty somethings there as well. Yeah, and and there were brown folks and white folks and, and kids, all, all sorts, and kids. I think kids were a really major moderating influence on on adult mm. behaviour, and that's mm. really good. Mm. Um, you know, we had half a dozen kids at our campsite. They had a great time. Yeah, and and um, you know, it's, you had a great experience. I had a great experience. Though looking on the the, the Facebook page, um, there was an, a, a, a note from the organisers yesterday saying, "Hey, thanks to the community, we had an awesome festival, but there were a few people that let us down, and and may have put the the festival possibly in jeopardy for the future." Yeah, uh, hopefully not. Um, I mean, yeah, there were, there were a few things went wrong. I, I was talking to, uh, I mean, one of the things that went wrong was, was the sewage release from one of the boats um, off the beach, which was horrible. Yeah. Um, fortunately, it didn't close the whole beach. Uh, I was talking to someone else who'd, who'd also sailed there yesterday, and he reckoned the, the problem was more likely to be not one big release, but the fact that there were a lot of um, not terribly well-maintained old boats there that didn't have holding tanks. Ah, okay. And I suspect that may have been a, it's still unacceptable. God, that's a beach that people swim on. Yeah, there was some criticism though that um, that the fact that it had sold out uh, means that there may have been a greater variety of people and and some people that didn't um, also respect the environment that they were in. Yeah, possibly. And mm. and the fact that it sold out, I think, you know, obviously as other people have been saying. Mm. Um, um, put pressure on the camping and parking areas, and mm. uh, and I think they've acknowledged they, that they messed that up. Mm. Um, they're going to have to look at what happened there, but you know they did get a hell of a lot of the rest of it right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and um, from from the messages on Facebook and elsewhere, uh, I think they've acknowledged you know, that something didn't go well, and they're yeah. going to look at why that happened. Yeah. And I think it was uh, in part because of a, a new management team. Yeah, I mean there are people who've been working on Splore for years who weren't there this time, um, and you know the things <laughs> clearly went wrong uh, with that. I mean it, I was quite lucky; it didn't take didn't take me long to get in. It took you guys a long time to get in, didn't it? Yeah, about an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, but but we got there nice and early. We got well early as in sort of middayish. Um, some people, of course, arriving after work. Um, right. It wasn't so good for them. But yeah, yeah, and, mm. and missing Erica Badu. Yeah. yeah. 
Hmm. Take your take the day off next time. Indeed, on the Friday. I reckon. Yeah, I was quite I was quite <laughs> amazed by how many people you know that will get there the day before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and in some cases, stay stay till the day after yeah. the festival. Yeah, and they're flexible enough to let you do that. Yeah, no, I, I think take the day off is, is the best advice. Basically, yeah. don't yeah. try and drive from Auckland, you know, after work. You well, won't get there. No, exactly. Well, I think we can truly um, agree that it is a, a unique festival experience in New Zealand, and. And perhaps it takes a little bit of those special festivals from all around the world and what makes them special as well and putting them here in New Zealand. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think it was one of the one of the Cuban brothers from the stage said that this is the best festival location in the world, mm. end of story. Yeah. And he may well be right, I yeah. think. Yeah, nice. Mm. Okay, so the uh, country's attention, of course, is on Christchurch today, Russell. Yeah. Um, we've got on public address this morning, we've got <clears throat> posts by Emma Hart and David Haywood who both live in Christchurch and have both been affected by, by the earthquakes in, in different ways, um, particularly David Haywood and his family. Uh, they're one of the many, many families whose lives are still up in the air. Uh, they've just moved into um, a, a temporary earthquake village in Linwood, um, which is part of the process of them getting their house back. Uh, they were also um, one of the families who got stuck by the insurance companies. Oh who decided uh, that there was a loophole that meant that they did not have to pay full replacement insurance, even though David and his family had been paying premiums for just that kind of coverage. Yeah. Uh, and that, that was because of the way the government did the, um, did the red zone thing. Um, and those people, I think, uh, in, in the end, um, David and his family won't lose too much. Uh, there are still people who are looking at losses of tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, because they cannot get the value back that they paid for in insurance mm. for their mm. houses. Um, the, what David ended up doing, uh, which is great because the insurance company will still have to pay out quite a lot of money for this, is actually moving the house. Mm. Uh, the government condemned the land under it there in Avonside, um, uh, and the house was fixable, which was the insurance company's basis for refusing to pay out. So they said, OK, if the land's buggered, let's just move the house off it then. Mm. Uh, and they, they've um, um, they've had to move out of Christchurch, uh, you know, out, out to the outskirts, uh, because um, good land is almost impossible to buy yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're hardly alone. There are thousands of families in that position. Yeah. Well, so so that I mean that's kind of the point though, isn't it? That um, say a year on from a tsunami or a major storm. Uh, where there's been loss of life and devastation. You could say, well, that was the event that happened then, but this is an ongoing scenario, and, uh, and you know, the, the, the shakes are still going, and, and so it's an odd sort of day in that respect, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we've now gone past 10,000 aftershocks yeah. uh, from the, from, since the original one in uh, September 2010. Yeah, the, yeah the, the, this is the odd thing. You're commemorating an event that's still happening. Yeah. Um, and... I, I did get the impression last time, I've been down to Christchurch several times, I did get the impression last time that people are getting their heads up a bit. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are some good things happening, and uh, interestingly, they're, they're happening uh, from the grassroots. It's people who are doing them, because it, to some extent they've lost uh, confidence in, um, in institutions. Um, I, you know, I interviewed Roger Sutton when I was down, and I think he's a good man, but... Mm. Um, Sarah just seems overwhelmed by the job it's got to do. Yeah. Uh, the council is completely dysfunctional now. Uh, and you, you're starting to see this thing of people thinking, well, um, nothing's going to happen unless I do something myself. Yeah. Uh, so you've got all those. And, and they're only minor things, things like gap fillers. Um, just, to, just to actually put something in the places where all those buildings are gone from, yeah. um, I, I think is a really good thing. Uh, but yeah, just just psychologically, uh, Emma Hart writes a bit about that. It's just so hard. Um, media coverage is it uh, is it too little, too much, or about right? Oh, there'll be tons of it. I'm probably going to avoid most of it. Mm. I, I would say if you haven't seen When a City Falls, uh, watch it on TV3 tonight. Okay. Uh, it's not a perfect film, but it's a really really important film, uh, and it's you know it's. Uh, it, it captures a street-level view of what's happened mm. in a way that the news cameras actually didn't. Mm. Um, you might also want to pop along to um, the Christchurch collection at nzonscreen.com. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I've written the intro for that. It, it's been time for the anniversary. Mm. And I think the value of, of that collection is that it shows a whole lot of places that now exist only in memory. Mm, true. They're gone. Mm. 
uh, and th- there's something sort of sad but valuable about that. Yeah. So, um, if you if you have ever lived in Christchurch, and those places that you used to go are gone, and that's mm. the case for me. I, I mostly grew up there. Yeah. Um, have a look at that collection because those places live on in the in the, in that video. So. Yeah. NZ on screen. Thanks very much, Russell. Mm. Cheers. We'll talk to you next week. Indeed. See ya. Russell Brown at uh, publicaddress.net and the Media 7 Show TVNZ.